it is widely accepted that the superior tone of the EMG gramophones made by the EM Gin Company derives, among other things, from the horn made of papier applique. As an experiment, I made a gramophone with such a horn, which I called EMG Experimental Monmouth Gramophone No. 1, which see on YouTube, choosing as the starting point the trademark model, well known from the painting. This turned out more successful than I had expected, so I decided to make a gramophone based on the famous EMG Mark 10. This is what it looks like. The case is made from a solid half-inch mahogany plank to minimise vibration. The motor, deck plate and turntable are a Columbia 100 from a cabinet gramophone. The tone arm is of the type used in an HMV Model 163 and the sound box is an HMV 5A. To those of a practical bent, and to myself as well, the question that springs immediately to mind because of the horn shape is how does one design the mould so that it and the horn can be parted afterwards? I made a wooden former using four spaced chipboard discs of decreasing diameter whose measurements were derived from a photograph of a real EMG and attached strips of hardboard to give the shape shown. Next, a wooden tower was set up at the end of a baseboard and a curved metal tube was releasably attached to this using two J-bolts. The wooden former was clad with cardboard from cereal packets and a length of pipe insulation was fed into the metal tube and into a hole in the top wooden disc. This was then surrounded with large cell bubble wrap and the whole thing wrapped in kitchen cling film as a release coating. Two coats of white paper were first glued, followed by 50 coats of strips of newspaper and over 60 at the bend for strength, and finished with another two coats of white paper, all glued with wallpaper paste, two coats at a time with 24 hours between gluing sessions. The metal tube was thus moulded into the horn. The J-bolts were released and the horn lifted sharply and the mould parted itself where the pipe insulation met the top wooden disc. It was then a case of simply gripping the end of the pipe insulation and pulling, whereupon the remainder of the mould came out at the first attempt. The idea of large cell bubble wrap was that in the event of problems, it would have been possible to burst the bubbles to allow easier extraction, but this did not prove necessary. The mouth of the horn is 30 inches in diameter, and length back to front is about four feet. The horn was painted using polyurethane varnish. Before anyone asks, it is not for sale and I am emphatically not going into production. If anyone out there knows how the EMG company moulded their Mark 10 horns, I would be very pleased to hear from them. There follows a recording of Gili singing In Gemisco from the Verdi Requiem which has not been subjected to any kind of clean-up procedure. Oh. 
Oh! 